Basal ganglia. Two words that have been filling anatomy students with dread since the beginning of time. This group of grey matter structures that control so many of our conscious actions also seem to have an unreasonable influence on our stress levels. But fear not, we're going to overcome this basal ganglia angst, and by the end of this video, you'll be a BG expert. Buckle up, it's time to tackle the basal ganglia. So what exactly will we be learning about in this tutorial? Let's take a look. First up, we'll define the basal ganglia and describe their general location. We'll then discuss what structures are actually included in this group and discuss their individual functions. We'll then look at some structures which are considered part of the basal ganglia based on their location and anatomy. Next, we'll briefly discuss some other structures which are sometimes considered part of the basal ganglia based on their function. We'll then see how the basal ganglia interact with other structures of the brain through a number of well-defined pathways. And finally, as always, we'll finish up with a clinical note to put the importance of the basal ganglia into perspective. That's a lot to cover, so let's waste no time at all and ask the question, what are the basal ganglia? So the word ganglion means a grey matter mass, which as we know, is formed by collections of neuronal cell bodies. These masses of grey matter are located deep in the central nervous system, in the inferior part of the cerebral hemispheres, lateral to the thalamus. Now on to the individual elements of the basal ganglia. First up, let's talk about the corpus striatum. The corpus striatum is a bilateral collection of three grey matter nuclei found in the inferior cerebral cortex. It is formed by the putamen and the globus pallidus, which together form the lentiform nucleus and the chordate nucleus. The corpus striatum literally translates to stripy body, and if you look at a horizontal section through the brain, you can see why. All three nuclei forming the corpus striatum have a striated appearance due to the strands of grey matter passing through the internal capsule from the chordate nucleus to the putamen. Now let's look at some of the finer details of each individual nucleus, beginning with the chordate nucleus. This long and lanky C-shaped structure can be divided into three parts, a head, body and tail, which terminates at the amygdaloid body, which is not part of the chordate nucleus. You can quite easily orientate yourself because the head is the anteriormost portion of the structure. The chordate nucleus is perhaps one of the most critical members of the basal ganglia due to the long list of critical functions it holds. Firstly, it plays an important role in controlling the speed and accuracy of directed or voluntary movements. It's also involved in what's known as executive function, which means that it helps guide our brain through decision-making processes related to focus and attention. This structure has an important role in reward and reinforcement. It is a system involved in associated learning, where an action becomes linked to a certain response. Studies have also linked the chordate nucleus to our emotions, notably our responses to visual beauty and attraction. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and Atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.